So President White used to have a saying, so let's see a show of hands, we've heard people, have anybody heard him say this, I'm just a poor old country boy from Adams County, right? <laughs> so we heard that. So he would always say that and everybody would always chuckle or everyone would always laugh. Well, when he decided, when he, he left office, John Kerry, and John Kerry's in here, John's a great friend, John said, you know, President White always got that great laugh out of that line, so he said, I'm going to steal it. I'm going to start using it. So John would start telling everybody, hey, I'm just a poor old country boy from Jackson County. Nothing. No, no laughs. So John came to me and he said, I don't understand. President White, everybody always laughed when he said that. He said, why doesn't anybody ever laugh when, when I say it? I said, John, don't you realize? I said, you really are just a poor old country boy from <laughs> Still on the farm, pro bono day labor for my, uh, for my son and grandson. You know, Bob Evans of Bob Evans Farms, uh, he used to call me a gentleman farmer until he showed up at my house one day, stopped in unannounced. We, we were, I was building a new barn and pouring concrete, and I was out there, no shirt on, Levi's uh, sweat down to my knees, and, and here Bob Evans came in. But he was a wonderful friend, and uh, he said, Doug, I'll never call you a gentleman farmer again. I know you to be a real farmer. Uh, Senator White liked to talk in a lot of sort of agricultural metaphors and so you would ask him sort of you know well what's gonna happen with that bill and he'd say well you know Julie like when the steeds nose is under the tent that's when you'll know that the bill is almost and I'd be like what what are you talking about <laughs> and and so we would all go back to the press room and try to figure out did that mean yes did that mean no and this is probably one of the happiest days I've had in decades I, and I mean that uh, because not only am I seeing my former Democratic colleagues, but I'm seeing my Republican colleagues with whom I considered friends then and I consider friends now. And I learned as much from my Republican colleagues as I did my Democratic colleagues. And I wish today uh, legislators could do what we're doing here today, because you have a lot less division, a lot less acrimony. There was a bill going through the legislature to expand the use of handicapped parking spaces. So. I put an amendment in to allow pregnant women to use the handicapped parking spaces. And the Democrats really didn't like it, and Bill Bowen amended it to severely pregnant. I don't know what severely pregnant is. <laughs> you say, are you hard? But. And so I went over to him and I said, well, what do you think? I mean, is it going to pass? Is it gonna, whatever. And he said, I could use some whisk. I could really use some saltines in moonshine right now. <laughs> <laughs> that this amendment was not in the bill because the chairman of the committee had cement in his head. <laughs> and so for a long time thereafter, I was known as Old Cement Head. <laughs> and it sounds familiar today because the Supreme Court then was saying, well, we're going to send Senator Finan to jail for contempt. <laughs> so my chief fiscal officer says the press came to him and will Senator Finan really go to jail? No, no, he'll send staff. <laughs> so my official duty is to uh, recognize someone who has the distinction of having served the longest uh, in the Ohio Senate, Senator Ted Gray, who started serving in the 99th General Assembly in 1951 and served until December of 1993. If you step back and you take a look at uh, the people that served in the Ohio Senate, um, and some of them as early as 1951 today, um, you can see a, a group of really great professionals um, who I think really do like each other. Uh, I think it makes us all remember that it's about the institution and it's about Ohio. Uh, the, anything that happens, some of the politics and some of the spats that happen in the ordinary world all evaporate over time and we're all talking about the mission and the uh, fraternity that comes from being a member of the state senate. I'm scared to death for our culture when our children are running around and all they have is white earplugs plugged in. They're getting where, what we got off of the street or from mom and dad or from friends and neighbors. They're getting from different sources and I'm just uh, very, very concerned about our culture and I don't have those answers. Uh, young America will figure it out. One of the reasons why 
those personal relationships are a little stronger in you know, frankly, I'm old enough to remember those days, is you really did have to talk directly with somebody. Um, even if there were telephones, there weren't telephones everywhere, and there was no texting and no email. So really it was about meeting people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I try to tell young people today, if they want to be successful in whatever endeavor, in, including running for office or whatever, you have to talk to people personally. But I'm in a bar with one of my Republican colleagues and over a bill, I'm writing an amendment on a napkin. <laughs> Next day, that amendment goes through. That's the kind of thing that if you don't mingle, then you can't get it done collegiately. Here in the Ohio Senate, uh, people work together regardless of party. 90% um, of the bills that passed uh, during my tenure as Senate President and more than 90% uh, of the bills that passed during my predecessor's tenure as Senate President passed with bipartisan support uh, because we're all here for the same reasons. We all want a better life for our kids and for our grandkids. I had 81 bills I passed with my prime sponsor on over my years. But they said, what's the greatest thing you ever did here? And I said it was a renovation of the state house. It had been tried four times, never succeeded. We started out for $63 million appropriated. It eventually was $121 million, asbestos, all kinds of stuff. But we did it right. And walking through the Senate chambers today, and same carpets on the floor, and it looks great. It looks great. You did a great job with the People's House. That a lot of people come visit here from across the country. Oh, very much so. I'm very proud of that. And a lot of kids come here. It's their first taste of state government, anything like that. That's a, that's a plus, a plus for me.